to week 10 uh, of Saturday Shop Tour. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Today we're going to feature my friend Tim Scanlon, uh, and he's going to tell you all about this really cool uh, former, or his shop, but it was, it's, been, it's had a really cool history. He's going to walk you through that. He's going to give us a tour, talk about his tools, and he's going to give us a demo as well. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Tim. And, uh, All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming to the shop tour, and uh, happy Independence Day. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, just to get started. I am a graduate, 1982 graduate from Bucks County Community College, uh, their flying woodworking program. Um, after I graduated, I set up my own shop in South Philly, where I uh, uh, built custom furniture for about two years. Um, I then kind of bounced around uh, a couple different mill workshops, uh, custom uh, commercial uh, woodworking uh, shops. And then the last 26 years, um, I spent uh, working as a, uh, a building maintenance man for a research and development uh, company up in Princeton, New Jersey during the day. Uh, at nights and weekends, um, Maureen and I would buy old properties here in Bristol and renovate them. And this is, I'm going to say live on the internet, this is my last official renovation project. I don't believe you. Uh, it's true. It's on record now. I can't take it back. So anyway, uh, Carl, if you could put that first picture up. Sure. Okay, you should be looking at the front of my shop, which is located on uh, Pond Street in, uh, in Bristol, PA. The building um, was the early home of uh, the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church from 1858 to 1883. They then moved to uh, the 200 block of Wood Street and a Samuel Ardry bought the uh, building and set up his machine shop here. Uh, that was in 1884. He was from uh, England, where he was a, uh, an engineer and an inventor. He's got a number of patents held over in England. And uh, when he came over here and set up shop, um, he produced machinery for the textile business and he also had a number of patents. Um, Carl, if you want to just go through Next pictures slide. two through number five. Okay. They'll show, they'll show some of his uh, patented uh, pieces of machinery. Yep. We're looking at the, the new napper. Currently. Okay, yeah, that was that was some kind of a, a textile machine for I, I assume texturing fabric. Um, um, you know, my guess is since we had the uh, the Grundy Mills across the street that uh, he was uh, he was doing a lot of work for them. That's just my conjecture, but uh, it seems like a good possibility. Um, and then he uh, the, the next thing I have there is the uh, the Ardrey Chuck, which was a uh, um, made for metal ladies uh, would hold the work on a uh, on a metal. The building stayed in the the Ardrey family till about 1950, uh, and then it was sold to uh, Alexander Conka, uh, who also ran the machine shop, uh, apparently with the same machinery that was here in 1884. Um, everything was run off one main shaft and leather belts. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of that a little bit later on. Uh, now we're just going to do a quick walkthrough if you want to yep. cut back to me. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. So this, this area right here is my wood shop. Um, this is the most finished area that I have right now. We'll come back to this area a little bit uh, uh, in the future. Okay. All right. The next area 
This area is about uh, 20 by 40, so roughly 800 square feet. This is the next area uh, I started working on. Um, this will be um, a machine shop area. Um, my former employer, um, I heard through the grapevine, uh, wanted to sell all their machine shop equipment that I used for the 26 years that I worked there. Um, so I put in an offer, it was accepted. Um, so I will soon have a metal lathe, a Bridgeport milling machine, um, hopefully a large metal cutting bandsaw and a heavy duty drill press. Um, I'm still waiting for them to come back to work. Uh, they're still kind of shut down from the, uh, the quarantine. But sometime this summer, uh, I hope to have this as a, uh, you know, a working machine shop. I got to clean it out first. <laughs> Tim, okay, Tim, the next Tim, Tim, real quick question. Are they, are yes. they selling that equipment because they're upgrading or are they outsourcing it? Uh, no, when I started, uh, the company uh, I worked for was uh, Siemens. And when I started, uh, they were pretty heavily involved in uh, chip fabrication and uh, robotics. Right. And after maybe 10 years, uh, the whole focus of the company went to software development. So there really wasn't a need for it. Um, you know, I, they kept it there because they had the space, um, but they since added quite a bit of uh, personnel and they needed the basin area where the shop used to be set up. So uh, they really don't have a need for it. Um, and it's just been sitting in their storage room for six or seven years. Right, okay. Okay, so this, this front area, um, this was their uh, main machine shop proper. This is where everything happened. Um, I haven't obviously done anything um, since the day I bought it in this area of the, the building. Uh, if you look up on the ceiling, that's where the main shaft was that drove every piece of machinery he had up until 2014 when he stopped working. Uh, okay, that is um, a view of the shop looking towards the back of the building. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what that machine was. I think it's some type of metal planer, uh, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, that shows the view looking towards the front of the building. The and shift. if you look up on the ceiling, you'll actually see the shaft with all pulleys uh, hooked up to the equipment. Wow. And then you can go to the last picture, which uh, is a picture of a, uh, a milling machine that was here. There's light bulbs are in that picture. Yeah, Maureen, you gonna talk about the light bulbs? <laughs> yeah, I just noticed the light bulbs in that picture. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's a funny thing. I never, I never met Alexander Conca, and for the 30 some years that Maureen and I have lived here in town, I always wondered what happened in this building. Uh, the only evidence of life I ever saw was in the evenings when we would walk by the building and we would see a single, 60 watt bulb lit up over one particular piece of machinery that he happened to be working on at the time. Um, the guy must have been extremely frugal. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, so we're looking at the last picture of the yes. milling machine. Um, if you guys uh, have any interest in old industrial history, all this machinery, the main shaft, uh, was bought at auction the same day I bought the building. Um, there's a place up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right outside of uh, the old Bethlehem Steelworks, that was set up as a, uh, an industrial history museum. If 
you ever get a chance um, to go there, it's amazing. They they cleaned up all the equipment. They have other pieces of industrial equipment there from you know the turn of the, the 19th century, and uh, the the main shaft that was here in the ceiling, I'm about 95 percent sure, is the one they display in the museum. It's called the National Museum of Industrial History in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So check it out sometime if you got time. Okay, um, we can go up a little bit further. This area is pretty dark. There's no lights up here yet. Um, this was a like a part storage uh, stock room. Um, I'm considering turning this into a uh, a wood drying kiln. I've been looking into um, a dehumidification uh, drying system. I don't know a lot about it. I'm just in the early days of researching it. Um, if anybody out there knows anybody or anything about it, I would uh, uh, definitely like to hear something, anything you know about it. Uh, but that's, that's one idea I have for this room. Okay. We're going to go back to the uh, nice clean shop. Okay. All right, I'm just going to walk you around right now and just show you the machinery I have, uh, and then I'll show you a couple of projects I've done here. This eats all my wood scraps in the wintertime. It needs more. Uh, been a great addition. It's the only source of heat I have in the building right now. Uh, I built a, uh, a surround in the back. Uh, this is some fire resistance out of old tiles that I've had from uh, various building renovations. Um, built a, a bookcase to hold all my fine woodworking magazines from the last uh, 40 years. Uh, my bottle collection from all the different renovations. And I don't know, are Roy and Kathy? Yeah, they're on. Uh, I went to Roy and Kathy's to pick up some uh, firewood that they wanted to get rid of, and they asked me if I wanted this, this rafting board, and I said, absolutely. Um, so I, uh, I rigged it up so it would hinge off the wall. It's got a, a rack system down there so I can adjust the angle, and when I'm not using it, it folds down out of the way. So, Thank you, Roy and Kathy. This will use. I'm just waiting for a, an idea to start drawing. Uh, a drill press. Here's a, a little project that I did for my brother. My brother is a, uh, a soon retired uh, college professor, and he wants to start uh, building banjos in his retirement. And he told me uh, last year that he was having trouble making the joint from the neck to the, the round body of the banjo. So I came up with this uh, sanding jig. Uh, it's essentially a drum with a brace of wrap around it, uh, the exact diameter of the body of the banjo. Um, the neck uh, will sit on this. The neck does not meet the, the body of the banjo at a 90 degree angle. So this gives him some adjustability, um, you know, for whatever angle he happens to need for the, the instrument he's building. Uh, essentially, it's just a drum that I turned on the lathe. It has a bearing on the bottom. And then this gets chucked up into the, uh, the drill press and you just push the neck 
right into that and you get the curve and the angle that you need. So hopefully he'll pick this up this summer. <laughs> um, 10 inch table saw, I have a, uh, a router table that I put on uh, a couple weeks back. Um, yeah, it works nicely. This is my Makita six inch planer, 12 or a six inch joiner, 12 inch planer. Um, this thing is about 40 years old. I, I bought it brand new before Maureen and I were married. Uh, this thing I'd like to show you, I just, uh, I rebuilt it. I put all new bearings in. I took the original uh, two knife planer head off and this is a, a Shelix uh, helical cutter. Um, all these are individual carbide cutters. Um, and it's, it's nice because if, if you ding a, you know, a, a blade, you don't have to change one giant knife. Um, you just rotate this, this carbide cutter 90 degrees and you have a fresh uh, cutting surface. Because it's cutting at an angle, you get more of a shearing cut. The boards come out so much better. I, I get, you know, much less uh, tear out uh, and a and much cleaner board. Um, it, it's nice for like highly figured uh, uh, type wood. Cool. Hey, just a heads up, we have about eight minutes left. Okay, all right. All right, so the next thing, is a, uh, a planer molder. Um, the last renovation we did uh, was our house on uh, Radcliffe Street. And it's, a, it's an old Victorian. A lot of the uh, trim is missing. So I was able to uh, cut off a sample of the trim that I needed and sent it to a guy out in Ohio, and he would match the cutter to the, the piece of wood I sent him. And I was able to mill, um, you know, exact reproductions of what I had in the house. That's awesome. So this was a casing that I used up in the, uh, the second and third floor. This is uh, some casing uh, that was on the first floor. Uh, some different styles of base cap. And this was um, some ceiling uh, tongue and groove um, porch boards. Tim, what does one of those dies cost to have made? Uh, the, the bigger ones that I showed you were about, run about 150 bucks. Okay. Um, he does uh, make smaller ones, and he makes a lot of stock ones that you can get much cheaper, you know, 50 bucks. Right, cheap, okay. You know, a little bit cheaper than that. Um, all right, I only have a couple minutes left. Okay, uh, if, you six minutes. To, yeah. if you would go to the picture number nine, uh, okay. it should be a picture of the coffee shop on Wall Street. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the red areas that you saw on the building were um, individual stamped tin plated steel. Um, roofing shingles. When I got to uh, scraping and painting, I found that there was about 225 of them that were so badly corroded that they couldn't be saved. So, you know, I was kind of scrambling. I didn't want to just put asphalt shingles up. So I figured, let me, let me try uh, to make a stamping die. So um, I bought a Harbor Freight 20-ton uh, uh, press and I made these stamping dies out of, it's a one inch piece of steel as the base. And then this stuff here is a steel filled epoxy. So I, I formed a male and female stamping die using, you know, an original as my template. I bolted the male up to the, the bottom of the, uh, 
of the press. So this was suspended in the air. And then I would just crank the, uh, the jack down and squeeze out new shingles. So I was able to make 225 of these to, uh, to rescue those, uh, the facade of that building. Um, the reason I'm showing you a picture of the shop press, I don't know if you went over that, mm -hmm. but I'll share it right now. Yeah, the Harbor Freight 20 ton shop presses are 20 ton shop presses in, in name only. Uh, I, I collapsed uh, two of them. They just, they, the steel frame twisted and they just fell apart. Um, so that's that. I can give you a quick sawdust demonstration. Um, the last couple pictures should show some of the trim in our house presently. Um, and I just wanted to turn a, a rosette um, just to show you how it's done. So, Ta -da. that's a finished rosette. Uh, it's cool. Yeah, so it's a, uh, that's it. All <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That, that quick. <laughs> Any questions? Hey, Tim and Maureen, when you're, re when you're recording, uh, did you just mute that or is there something that's, that filters out the sound from the machine? Because we could still hear you, but not the machine. Nope, didn't do that at all. No, and it was making no. quite a bit of sound. Yeah, it's interesting because it, it, it screamed out that uh, the, the lathe noise. Just curious. Yeah, it's so it's yeah. It'll do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions for Tim? Somebody has had something. <laughs> <laughs> This is Nora. I, I know you said it was your last renovation project, but my yes. house needs to work, Tim, so. <laughs> <laughs> Nora wants to hire you. <laughs> it's just, it's his last behind Maureen and Megan and Jack. <laughs> <laughs> my family keeps them very busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say it's his last unpaid renovation. <laughs> yes. No, we're all unpaid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, we're just a little bit past. Thank you for joining us, Tim, Maureen. Thank you. That was pretty, pretty awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, I do have something lined up for next week, but I'm just waiting to confirm. Uh, you'll thank see you. And then also, uh, I don't. I started a YouTube channel, so you guys can start sharing the videos outside of Facebook. So, oh, happy, excellent. Happy, thank happy you. Fourth of July. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Soon. Amazing. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.